note the, the characteristics of that video. It was 52 seconds long, uh, and the video gave an, was an average bit rate of 535 kilobits per second, and audio 93 kilobits per second, which is a total of 620, 630 kilobits per second. So our file size 4.3 megabytes, 52 seconds is, so 4.3 megabytes divided by 52 seconds gives us a rate of about 630 kilobits per second, where 90 is the audio and 530 or 540 is the video. That's the average rate across that 52 seconds. Of course, it varies over time, but that's the average rate. That's the actual rate after using the, the H.264, the MPEG-4 codec for the video, and the MPEG-4 AAC codec for the audio. The raw rate, 472 megabits per second. Although, I saw before it was 48 frames per second. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was just 24 frames per second. If it was, in which case, we'd have to half this value. Okay, but this is still the raw data rate. So the data rate of our network, the errors or packet loss in our network, the delay in our network, and the jitter, or more formally called the, the delay variation, impact upon our multimedia applications. That was demo was just for streaming. With interactive applications, the performance requirements are uh, more strict, especially with re relate, re regard to delay. With interactive application, someone talking to someone across the internet, the delay needs to be small so that it's as if they are in the same room talking to each other. So typical values expected with a voice call, if the delay so not the, the jitter or delay variation, but the actual delay from one endpoint to another is 150, less than 150 milliseconds. It's not noticeable by the two users. 150 to 400 milliseconds is considered noticeable, but people can tolerate it. Much greater than 400 or even half a second, and the application may become unusable. So delay is another... Uh, criteria that impacts upon our interactive applications. Let's look more detail with an example about jitter. And I'll try and draw this diagram. You'll notice there's an error in there and on each of the slides you will detect that to see the general concept of why jitter impacts upon our streaming and also why YouTube, for example, pauses for some time and then starts again. Or why, when I started the video playing, there was some delay before it started playing back. This, this diagram tries to illustrate when the source sends the packets, so the rectangle on the left is the source computer, they send the packets across the network, and when the receiver receives the packets and plays back the content of those packets. So for this simple example, let's assume what happens, let's say it's video or audio, each packet contains some portion of the video that we need to send across the network and play back. A frame or a set of frames of the video. So what the source does, our server in, in our example, the source, I'll call it the server, the source creates a packet, puts the video inside that packet, a small portion of the video, that is several frames or one frame inside that packet, and sends it across the network. When the other computer receives that packet, 
it takes the content and plays it on the screen. So in this example, the source is going to send a packet every 40 milliseconds. Just made up that number just for this example. And our network has a delay of 50 milliseconds. What that means, if I send a packet at time zero, the other device will receive that same packet 50 milliseconds later. If we send at time zero, we'll receive at time 50. That's the network delay. In the first example, the jitter is zero. The jitter is the delay variation, the difference between the, the delays of subsequent packets. So in this case, at time zero, we create the first packet, send it across the network. It arrives at time 50. That's this case. You don't have to draw it again. And in this case, we're creating a packet every 40 milliseconds to store the video. And the next packet, therefore, is created at time 40 and sent at time 40. With a 50 millisecond delay, it will arrive at time 90. Next packet. Packet 3. When is it sent? When is packet 3 sent? Easy question. Don't say 120. 120 is wrong. <laughs> we send every 40 milliseconds. My server sends the first one at time 0, the second one at time 40, the third one at time 80. OK. Good. The slide's wrong. Okay? I missed a packet in all of these diagrams. So that's the point here. That should be 0, 40, 80, 120, 160, and so on. So be careful. You would have detected that anyway. And received 50 milliseconds after it was sent. Look at, and we can keep drawing that for the others, look at the, the rate or the, the time at which the client receives the packets. At time 40, sorry, at time 50, another 40 milliseconds later, it receives the second packet. Another 40 milliseconds later, it receives the third packet. And another 40 milliseconds later, it receives the fourth packet, and so on. The source is generating and sending packets every 40 milliseconds. In this example, the client receives and plays back the content every 40 milliseconds. We'd say that this produces smooth playback because the rate at which it's being generated and the rate at which it's being played back is the same. One packet every 40 milliseconds. Okay. And hence, if this was video, it would look like smooth motion video. There'll be no pausing and, and starting again. The only problem in this case is that the client, if this is YouTube, for example, you, you have the client, your browser open, you press play at time zero. That triggers the server to send packets. From when you press play until you start receiving the, the packets and start playing, your client plays back those packets, it's a delay of at least 50 milliseconds. So in this case, there's a delay upon startup. So I press, I press play, sends a message to the server, the server starts sending packets, and then at time 50, I start receiving the packets and playing back the video. So the network delay in this case of 50 milliseconds impacts upon the time for the, the playback to start. But once the playback starts, 
we start receiving the packets and playing back the content at a smooth rate every 40 milliseconds. That was with no jitter. No jitter means that the delay between each packet is the same. Let's try a different example. Uh, playback means, all right, uh, playback on your multimedia client. Video, for example. When, when I was streaming, my server sends the video in, encoded in packets. It's more complex than what we show because it's in compressed, but the server takes the video, sends it in a, a portion of that video in a packet, and when my client receives that packet, VLC on the client, plays back that video. It shows the frame on the screen. So, in a, in a simple example, let's say that this packet contains one frame of video. Okay. So the server takes a frame of video, puts it in a packet, sends the packet. When my client receives that packet, it shows the frame on my screen. It shows that 854 by 480 pixels. And then when I receive the second packet, my client plays back the next frame on the screen. And so on. And of course, video, we need to, to get this illusion of motion, we need the frames changing at this rapid rate, 25 frames per second or so on. So if, if we receive the packets at a regular rate, we can display the frames on the screen at a regular rate. And hence we get smooth motion on the playback. So the playback is the playback of the video in this case. We can apply equally to audio. Of course, in, in real life, it's much more complex because there's compression, but the, the concept should be clear. This was in a network with some fixed delay, no jitter. Here's a network with the same amount of delay, but there's a jitter of, well, we'll see, we'll calculate in a moment. We say delay and jitter, delay, the jitter is plus or minus 10 milliseconds. In the first example, we had a delay the average delay was 50, the jitter was 0. And therefore packet 1, so this is the average delay of the packets and the average jitter, the de delay variation. Packet 1 had a delay of 50, packet 2, 50, 3, 50, and so on. Every packet had a delay of 50 in the, the first example, this one. In the second example, we're saying that the the average delay is the same. The jitter is plus or minus 10. Means the delay of individual packets ranges between 40 and 60. 50 plus or minus 10. And it would be random. All right. So I've randomly chosen some numbers here and we're missing one. Again, my picture in all cases missed the third packet. But for example here, the first packet has a delay of 50 milliseconds. The second packet has a delay of 40 milliseconds. Let's say, all right, this is not 120, but 80 here, has a delay of 60. Actually, what's, let's fix this. Uh, what's the delay of the missing packet in this case? Fix my error in the slides. What's the delay of the missing packet? Choose a value. Give me, let's, well, it should be between the delay of the packet should be between 40 and 60, okay? 
So we need a value between 40 and 60. Uh, let's see if we can get it average nice of, uh, let's make it 50. And let's draw it so it's clear. bit smaller. Of course there are more than five packets sent, but we just simplicity cover the five. 0, 40, 80, 120, 160. So the source sends the packets at the same interval. But let's say the delay of those individual packets are these five numbers. 50 for the first packet, 40, 50, 60, 40. When's packet 1 arrive? Sent at time 0, delay of packet 1 is 50, so arrives at time 50. Packet 2? Packet 2 arrives at time 80, okay, my slide is correct. Packet 3, 130, because packet 3 we send at time 80, and I've just made up the delay here to be 50. Okay. And packet 4, send at time 120, 180, and packet 5, 210. The delay of the first packet was 50, the second packet was 40, third one 50, and then 60 and 50. So the delay is varying. I've just chose these numbers for the example. It shouldn't, it doesn't have to be 50, 40, 50, 60, 50. There could be different values. It could be 43, 55, but the idea is it's between 40 and 60. And on average, if we look at many packets, we'd say on average the value is 50. And it turns out in these five packets, the average of these five delays is 50. That's our average delay. Now let's look at the playback. What happens, our receiver, when it receives a packet, it plays back the content. Let's say it shows a frame of the video. Is the playback smooth in this case? Why is it not smooth? The delay variation. Look, the first frame is shown on your screen at time 50. The next one, 30 milliseconds later. The next one, 50 milliseconds later. This one, 50. This one, 30. Think that the first one's displayed, and then a short time the next one's displayed, and then a longer time before the next third frame is displayed. So the difference is causing some unsmoothness in the playback. And the user, if, this become, if these values are large, then the user starts to notice that. The video starts to uh, not look like smooth motion. What we saw in our demo was when we had a large jitter, we saw this pixelation occurring and the, the quality going down because it's, it's more complex than just sending the frames because of the way the compression works. If you have some delay, it cannot play back all parts of the frame, but some parts it can. So it depends upon the compression algorithm. But the concept, the main point, if you receive the packets with varying delay, and play them back immediately, the quality at the receiver will not be as good as if we have no jitter. So how do we fix it? How do we overcome this problem? Because in a network, sometimes we cannot control the jitter. So we can use buffering to try and fix it. Any 
any problems or questions before we look at buffering? Okay. So, if, yeah. Expert on video? No. Why not? I'm watching video. So you can discern the quality, you can detect the quality if there's jitter. If you're an expert at watching video, you, you should now understand what causes the change in quality. Our problem here is that our variation in packet delay causes a poor or a reduction in quality at the receiver. In our network, we cannot control the jitter. It's something we have to deal with and cope with. One way to cope with it is to introduce some buffering at the receiver. In the previous case, whenever the receiver received a packet, it immediately played back the frame or the content in that packet. With buffering, you wait some time before you start the playback with the idea that the playback will be smooth. And for the smooth playback in our example, we mean a constant delay between the playback of the content. Let's expand our current diagram. Again, this picture all based on the same wrong picture. The idea here is that instead of immediately playing back the content, delay it such that we can play them back, play back the individual frames at a smooth rate. In this example, we're going to buffer the first packet for 20 milliseconds. We'll come back to Y20 in a moment. Let's see what happens. The client receives the first packet at time 50. Let's not play back yet. Let's buffer for 20 milliseconds and at time 70 playback. So we receive at 50, store it in a buffer in memory, and then at time 70 play back the content. The second frame is received, the second packet is received at time 80. What we do is, okay, watching the video on your phone. You can test the stream when you get home tonight. There's instructions on the website. You don't need to do it now. And maybe you can show me all the problems or explain it tomorrow in the lecture. Okay? Give a demo. When do we play back the second frame? Using buffering. The idea is that the first one was delayed by 20. No. In the previous case, we played back as, as, well, not immediately after we receive it. In the previous case, as soon as we received it at time 80, we played back. The problem was that we got this unsmooth playback because the delay between each of them varies. Given the same scenario, we receive the first one at time 50. Let's wait for 20 milliseconds and then play back at time 70. The second frame is received at time 80. When do we want to play it back? When should we play it back? What we'd like, we'd like to play, it, play the content back at a rate at which it was generated. Every frame is generated or a frame is generated every 40 milliseconds. To get smooth playback, we play back every 40 milliseconds. So if the first one is at time 70, the second one should be 110. That's when we'd like to play it back. And the third one should be 150. The fourth, 190, and then 230. If we do play back at those times, then it means we'll have smooth playback. Because difference of 40, 40, 40, 40. 
And when we created it, it was a difference of 40, 40, 40, 40. So we want to play back the same. To achieve that, we buffer some of those packets when we receive them. Receive number one at 50, buffer it for 20 milliseconds and play it back a little bit later at time 70. Receive number two at time 80, buffer it for 30 milliseconds, play it back at time 110. This one's received at 130, buffer for 20, play back at time 150. This one received at 180, buffer for just 10 milliseconds, play back at 190. This one at 210, buffer for 20 milliseconds, play back at time 230. If we buffered the first packet for 20 milliseconds, in this set of five packets, we can play the packets back at the right time. By the right time, I mean the time such that they get a smooth playback. If that works, by this buffering, we get a smooth playback. What's the problem? What's the problem? Smooth playback, in this case, because the, the content is played back at a regular rate every 40 milliseconds, but what's the problem? Memory, complexity, and something that the user may notice, you who's watching the video may notice, the delay at the startup. Note that from when you press play until when the first part of the video is played back, a delay of at least 70 milliseconds. Whereas in the previous case, it was a delay of just 50 milliseconds. So by buffering, we introduce this extra delay at the startup. So you press play, it takes a bit more time before it starts playing the video because we buffer some of the content. But once we, it starts playing, it will be a smooth playback. Because even if we have some jitter, that buffer tolerates or deals with that jitter by uh, playing back at a slightly later time. If a frame arrives too early, then we can delay it. If it arrives too late, then we can buffer it for a much shorter time. So we play it back at the right time. So this is a trade-off in that if we have jitter, have some playback buffer, which can result in smooth playback, but this extra delay at the startup. And that's what you see in your, your online videos sometimes. You press play, there's a while before it starts. Once it starts, it's smooth. But if your network conditions are not good, then maybe it pauses for a while while it's building up the buffer again. And then plays back again and if, if there's some problem in the network, then again it may pause, build up the buffer so it can play back smoothly. The challenge in this case is working out how big the buffer should be. Here, why did I choose 20? Well, in this case, if I know what the jitter will be, we can calculate what our delay should be at the start. If you choose a large value here, then you can cope with larger amounts of jitter. So if I chose 100 instead of 20 here, then I can cope with a larger amount of jitter, plus or minus 50, for example. But if I choose 100 here, then again there's a large delay before my video starts. It wouldn't start at time 50 or 70, it would st start at time 150. So we need to choose how much to buffer and that depends upon the network conditions. So if you've got a large jitter, then you buffer more. If the jitter is small, you can buffer less. So buffering is common, commonly used in streaming applications. Not so common in interactive applications. So buffering introduces extra delay 
but the advantage is it smooths, smooths out the playback. It overcomes the problem of jitter. So playback buffers are a way to deal with jitter. For it, for it to work, we need to keep track of which packet comes first. So we have sequence numbers and often timestamps. We have some extra memory needed at the receiver, some complexity of the buffer. And what's a good value? Well, it depends upon the application and the network uh, characteristics. So in stored audio or video streaming, usually several seconds is tolerated. That's with YouTube, you press play, you'll usually wait one or two seconds for the video to start, and you can tolerate that. If I press play, and it takes one minute for that video to start, I probably have disappeared and gone to another video. Okay? So if the buffer is too large, the user will not be happy. But for live, we need smaller delay. So the, the buffer needs to be smaller. Well, several seconds, even less, is, is tolerated. Oh, live video streaming, in this case. For interactive, even less is needed. Because for interactive applications of voice call, we need very strict delay, very small. So buffering is not so useful. Any questions on buffering?